Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Get down with us, 804-447-0601. 804-447-0601. If you can't tell, it's definitely Ladies Night. All the songs you're going to hear tonight come from Ladies. That one was a little bit dirtier than I expected, so that was <laughs> my fault. I didn't actually go in and, you know, screen the songs ahead of time. My apologies to anybody that may have been offended by any of the words that you heard. And that's my daughter was offended. And those half stepping with Marcus J. 804 447 It's time now to get into the National Football League. Talk about some games. Talk, talk about some games. <laughs> I'll, I'll cue the music up in a minute. Come on, but uh, man, you know no, I know how we go and whatnot. But you got two people in the room that are happy. Yeah, just two. And you got one person <laughs> in the room who's not happy. So not, seeing as though seeing as though and please turn your mic on if you're gonna talk. My mic is on. Yeah, well you talk into it then. I don't want to. All right. Pick pick one. Either turn it on, talk into it, whatever you want to do. But anyway, seeing as though your team <laughs> lost the game, we're gonna save you for last. We're gonna get into it with big rule first. Yeah. Big rule. Yeah. Let's talk about the Washington Redskins. Let's brother. talk about the Washington Let's Redskins. Hear it, man. What's up? What you got to tell us about the Washington Redskins? You know, the funny part about it is that um, everybody had written us off, you know, because we had the four and one Minnesota Vikings coming to the house, and you know, it it it's really simple. We saw who they really were on Sunday, you know. We are who we thought they are who we thought we were. They were basically a bunch of fake and phony, and you know what? You can say what you want about the score. But we took him out. We're going to come back to you, Big Rue. We got a call on the line. We got Jay and Richmond on the line. What's up, Jay? What's happening, Marcus, Jay? How you doing, brother? Doing wonderful. What you want to get What you want to get in on tonight, brother? Um, I just wanted to come on and say, first of all, I very, very, very much respect the New York Giants defense. After seeing that thrashing of the San Francisco 49, yeah. impressed, impressed with the Redskins quarterback, RG3. Yes, sir. Looks like the man. And I want to also add that Tony Romo had a great game. We just hung up on uh, you. Uh, don't do that. But, he, uh, but he also threw more interceptions than my quarterback on the Rams. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> for, for a minute, for, for a minute, we weren't really sure who we were talking to. But I think I think we know now we're talking to Jay Savior. What's up, brother? What's happening? How you not going to identify yourself, man? You're going to call in anonymously. <laughs> To hang up on him. How you gonna not call? I knew, I, I knew, I, I knew Carlton was gonna try to hang up on me. Just like he tried, he, 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 he trying to hang up on you and whatnot. So, how did you, how did the Rams do yesterday, brother? We we we, we took an L, but you know we as, we're as usual. We're at five hundred, unlike Dallas. <laughs> say that say that again for us, Jay Savior. We're, we're at five hundred, unlike Dallas. Wow, what That's is because y'all play more games? Yeah, okay, oh, it's right, always. You're right. But we didn't get thrashed by Seattle. We beat Seattle. Oh, we also didn't get thrashed. Oh, yeah, we did get thrashed by the Bears. But um, isn't that the game where he threw, like, five interceptions? Okay, Tony yeah, Romo? he threw five interceptions. Where y'all rank? Is, is he supposed to be better than Sam Bradford? He so, still is better than Sam Bradford. Any day of the week, he's better than Sam Bradford. So, Go so, do some homework. I just wanted to come on the show and congratulate the Giants and Redskins on their win because they had very, very much deserved. Thank you, thank you. Everybody knows that. The Cowboys are not who we thought they were. <laughs> They're not. You know what? You, I'm, uh, you still scared of the Undertaker? Never. Yeah, you are. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh-huh. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You going to call in here, and I'm not defending Colton Banks. Let me just make that perfectly clear. But how you going to call the show up and your team lost? What's that about? How you going to call the show and get on somebody that's sitting in the studio and your team lost? You're absolutely right. I don't know how I could do it. But I just recall the last time that I was on your show that he had made blatantly remarks about my quarterback being so bad. So I just had to throw it in his face that his quarterback lost two in a row. Okay. We haven't done that yet. Well, that's fair. That's fair. Big Rube, is that fair? Is that fair? That's extremely fair. That's extremely fair. All right, Jay Savior. Thanks for calling, brother. We appreciate it. Make sure you bring yourself back in here. Remember what we talked about. You know, that thing we talked about. Yeah, Make you, sure you, you do that, all right? Here. Come on in here. Yeah. All right, brother. Peace. All right. Ain't no half stepping, Marcus J. 
Carlton Banks, before I get back to Big Rube, I'm going to stay with you for a minute, give you an opportunity to kind of <laughs> respond to that, you know. Hey, and we'll, we'll let you kind of talk about your game in a minute since y'all lost. We are going to have you go last. Uh, but he just called your boy out. What you got to say about that? My boy is better than his boy any day of the week. I don't care. His boy was drafted number one. He was drafted to be the answer. Romo happened to be the answer who went undrafted. Step your game up, son. Call me with some real stuff to talk oh to. My God, get yeah. your boys into the playoffs, all right? Steven Jackson is on his last leg. That's right. I said get the Rams into the playoffs. Wow. Now what? No, I was I was going back to the part where you said that Romo was the answer. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he yeah. was the answer. Right? I mean, I let him. I, yeah, <laughs> I, had, I had him go back in, but now I'm wondering. I'm like questioning whether I should have had him <laughs> go back in. He said Robo was the answer. <laughs> Big Rob, you were telling us about the win that the Washington Redskins had yesterday. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you pick up where you left off when Jay Savior jumped in? On yeah, us? it was cool. I mean, we all. I, I think last night proved that RG three is definitely the answer for Washington. He's been exceptional in his rookie year so far. He showed you how a number one draft pick should play. He he has. Jay Savior. I like to <laughs> boy, I tell you, these two Woo! these two boy, I tell you. I like I like it. I like heated sorry teams going against each other. So 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 the line on RG three, uh hundred and eighty two yards in the air. Uh he also led the team with a hundred and 38 yards yep. on the ground, mm-hmm. two touchdowns in the air. T- excuse me, two on the ground, one in the air. Um, and you and I kind of were, you know, blogging with each other back and forth yesterday. Why don't you tell me about the big play, the big play that I can't get you to stop oh, talking about? You talking about the four quarter, seventy six yard you touchdown tell us run? About the oh, big dude, play, that was a beast run. Why don't you tell? Because 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 he really is, you know, Carl Banks. He's really getting on me about it and. I want to let him have an opportunity to share with the listeners. Go well, on, go on. I'm pretty Rube. sure all the listeners saw it because that's probably that's easily the play of the day yesterday. Um, the biggest thing was it looked like he was going to run out of bounds, so he wouldn't get hit. And when he decided to run out of bounds, the Minnesota cornerback decided not to hit him, touch him, or anything. And so he was just like, "Hey, man, if you're not going to touch me, I'm just going to run straight up the field." And next thing you know, the Jets came on. Not the New York Jets. Not the airplane Jets. The Jets from RG3. And he let everybody know, look, I'm the fastest man on this field right now. And none of y'all can catch me. And then, in a great showboating move, which I don't really, I don't really, I'm big on showboating. But he turned around, looked at the receiver running as hard as he could to catch up with him. And was like, you five yards behind, dog. You can't catch me. He even high-stepped a little bit. You know, signs of Deion Sanders. It was excellent. And it pretty much, not pretty much, it completely ended the game. And, you know, that he had a concussion last week. I'm pretty sure he's he, he's good now. I, I don't think we're worried about a concussion right now. I, I do notice that the for what I did watch, the defense was a little scared to touch him because he slid a couple times. He ran out of bounds a lot. He didn't take any direct hits, but you know, I, I guess the defense has been. Hey, if he's going out of bounds, don't touch him. Just let him go. And got, uh, he ended up paying for him. Two texts from the eight hundred four. Two texts from the eight hundred four. The first one said, "Tony Romo is better than Sam Bradford, even if Romo had a broken leg." The other one said, "The Jets came on when um." RG3 was running down the field. They said it was kind of corny, but yeah, the Jets came on. I mean, they can, they can, you know, they can say corny all they want, but you know, it, was, it happened. Oh yeah, I agree. And as far as you know, Sam Bradford and Romo, personally, I don't care. I, I will almost say there's only one quarterback in the NFC East that's better than RG3 at this point, and you know, and it's and it's it's your boy, it's it's your boy. You know, um, Elias. I mean, Eli. Elijah. He's got chips. Elijah. Elijah. You know, and he Elijah. played really well yesterday. And he didn't really have to. He didn't have to do a lot. Right, let me let me just jump in on the Sam Bradford versus Tony Romo argument. Uh, I think it's nonsense. I love Jay Savior. I do. I love the young homie. He out his damn mind. Okay. Anybody that knows me knows I am not a Tony Romo fan. 
I, I don't. I don't I think both of them are pretty terrible. I don't. I don't. I don't. I won't say Tony Romo is terrible. I just don't think he's great. I think he's good. I think he's very good. I think his upside is very good. The only problem is he only touches it occasionally. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he plays okay more than he plays great. And I think when he figures out how to come with it consistently every single week, that's when the Cowboys going to actually be a more viable team. Sam Bradford, on the other hand. Mediocre quarterback on a mediocre team. Thank you. They're going to be mediocre until the end of his career. Maybe if they get him a running game, Ruben. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm if saying. they get him, you know, a, a Pro Bowl receiver, maybe Sam Bradford might do more, but I, I don't I don't see it. Well, I, I agree. Sam Bradford isn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, you know, I, I, I really am not thinking about judging him right now because he has a real coach. He finally has an offense that he is fluent in, so and he and he stays upright. He doesn't get hit a lot. So right now, I'm gonna leave that alone for him. As far as Romo goes, you know, not to touch the the Cowboys game, but I guess I'm gonna have to. The reason why they lost was not Romo's fault. Once again, well, since we since we on it, it's, we, it's never Romo's fault. Well, let's go into the Cowboys game. We said we talk about them last, but we yeah. you know Jay Savior brought him up, Colin Banks brought him up. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the Cowboys now. X's and O's. Let's, let's not really get too much into the to the fanship and the craziness. Yeah. Let's talk about what happened on the field because I watched part of this game. Cowboys had their chances. Correct. Yeah, it, we it, did have our chances. And Colton Banks, take take it away. It's your team. We you we did off. have our chances. Defense was playing well in the second half on three straight possessions. They held them to one yard. They had one big special team play. They had one big drive uh, that culminated in a touchdown. But when it came down to it, Dallas had poor clock management in the last two minutes of the game. Um, we scored, went for a two-point conversion, went to a big play receiver, Des Bryant. Ball hits your hands. They say you're supposed to catch it. Ball went through his hands. He did not catch it. He's crying for a flag. Next thing you know, line up for the onside kick. Onside kick rules now, you got to have even number of players on both sides of the field. Mm-hmm. Excellent onside kick. We kicked it right up the middle, got the right bounce, recovered the ball. Great. Couple of plays, got the ball closer within um, Bailey's field goal range. Next thing you know, we have 30 seconds left to play. Couldn't get to the line of scrimmage. Couldn't make a decision. Couldn't spike the ball. Couldn't call the timeout early. What did we do? We did nothing. We wasted 30 seconds. We wasted time to move the ball up a little bit closer, move it more so to the middle of the field to give a better accurate kick, you know, to to gauge for the left or the wide right or the wide left. We didn't do that. They lined the ball up on the left hash mark. What does the ball do? Wide left. It had the distance. The kick is up. Has the distance. Wide left. I was in tears. I stayed quiet. I'm getting texts from people in in Maryland, <laughs> my my evil twin brother decides he wants to text me, but then the Feagles lost, so you know he can't talk much trash to me now. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, poor clock management, which isn't a Romo fault. That more so is a coaching fault. The coaching staff should have got in his ear, time out, rushed him to the line, something to show a sense of um, urgency to the team, but they didn't do it. So we ended up taking this 51, 52-yard field goal. Like I said, everything was good, except for the angle of the kick. You know, I, on a on a clock management part, as far as the timeout thing goes, I am in agreement because last time I checked, coaches can actually call timeouts. So the fact that Jason Garrett did not call a timeout is on Jason Garrett. Um, as far as... Romo and poor cock management. That's not. Uh, it's partly on Romo, but it's also you practice how you play. Right. And obviously they're practicing terrible because I last time I checked, every NFL team practices two minute drills, two minute drills, minute drills. What we need to do that sort of thing. I mean, they everybody practices from freaking high school to NFL. If you don't know how a two-minute drill works, that is your fault. That is not the coach's fault. That is not 
the quarterback's fault. It is everybody else. It's insane that y'all wasted so much time. Number one, number two, you know, they it just from an outside looking in, they respect Romo, but I right. do not think that they that they believe Romo is their leader. Because you're right. When you start wasting 30 seconds like that, that's people not paying attention. People lost wherever they are. That's just horrible people. Right. You know, that's not a coaching thing. Because if Romo's screaming, hey, get online, get online so we can spike the ball, and people taking their time, yo, man, you got to start hitting people in their pockets. Let me let me ask you this, Carlton, because I, I watched – most of this beginning and most I didn't get really much into the middle of the game but I watched the beginning and I watched the end and I know that there was a lot of talk uh, in recent games about Des Bryant with a lot of the drop passes and things of that sort. Uh, we know Des Bryant got the touchdown at the end that had they gotten that two point conversion they would have tied it mm-hmm. and who knows what happens if they tie the game at that point the pass of course we know comes right back to who? Des Bryant so my question is this this is the guy. First of all, he wears the number of the only cowboy that I can honestly say that I liked. I always respected Troy. I always respected Emmett, but I always liked Michael Irvin. So when I see somebody wearing number eight eighty eight with the star in the helmet, ah, you know, you got to show me more. So, what's the deal? I mean, what are your thoughts as a fan of the team on the drops that he's having? Uh, is it in his head now? I mean, he had a very tough touchdown that he caught. And on the very next play, on the two point conversion, same it goes play. through his. It was pretty much the same play. It goes through his fingers. Very, very catchable ball. What is your thoughts? First, as a fan, then as an analyst, because I want your passion first, and then the analyst first. As Second. a fan, he's not concentrating. He's not paying attention to what he's doing. He's getting the um, Deion Sanders um, drug, whereas Deion will actually take plays off because he got bored. Where it does, you haven't afford, you haven't gotten to that status yet. You haven't made defenders scared of you to do anything. Yes, when you catch the ball, you are hard to bring down. But the problem is you got to catch the ball. Right. Okay? Right. You ran an out where Webb went down towards ACL or MCL. I can't remember which one he did. All you had to do, you ran out of bounds. Okay, that's not normally your forte. Had you caught the ball, paid attention to what was going on, you had another 10, 15 yards. Because the defender was behind you and the other one was on the ground. Right. It almost Touch looked you. like he was sad that he knew Webb hurt himself right. and he felt bad for him. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, he was gone. He was down. He wasn't getting up. Yeah, I just dude. got a I, I just got a text message from your man K Dub. K Dub's going to be joining us uh, going forward in the basketball season as he did last season. So we're looking forward to having him. But he just texted me up. Uh, text me. He asked a question, and this is not. I'm not going to ask you, Carlton Banks. I'm going to ask Big Rube because I, I want to know the answer to this as well. I don't think I'm going to get a good answer from you. Why are we as football fans still concerned about the Cowboys? They haven't warranted that for years, not since the 90s. It's 2012. Come on with the excuses. I think that's a fair question, seeing as though, and I'm not, I'm not going to let you respond, but I want Big Rube first. Every single year we go through the, the teams to watch. And every single year the Cowboys are at the top of the teams to watch. And I'm not, I'm not saying I hate the Cowboys. Anybody know me know I hate the Cowboys. But I'm not asking this question as a hater. I'm asking this question as a true football fan like your man K-Dub who asked the question, why do we even care about these cats for real? Two part, two reasons. One, because Jerry Jones has probably the best marketing staff known to man in football. Everybody knows who everybody on the Cowboys is. Why? Because you see him all the time. He, he markets them. You know that you know Des Bryant. You know, you know, I mean, you probably know some people on the offensive line. Like, really, who was the, who was Leon Lett before he messed up with the Don Beebe situation? He was nobody. But you know what? Everybody knows who Leon Lett is now. It's good marketing. And two, it's, it's, it pains for me to say this. The Cowboys have the talent and the crazy potential. However, you know, the problem with, with that is, the talent and the potential doesn't add up. It adds up to whatever, but it never adds up to 100. You know, it adds up somewhere short. Last year, it probably added up to 95, and that's when the Giants came, took the title, and rolled out, won a Super Bowl. Speaking of the Giants, let's kind of talk about the game yesterday and 
it's very, very, very difficult for me to uh. do this game as an analyst because of the passion that I have. And all the crap I had to take last week and preceding weeks from the 49ers fans uh, talking to me about the uh, San Francisco 49ers. So my question is this, and I'm going to start with Big Rube. I'm going to ask you a question. Did you watch this game? I know your game was on at the same time. Did you get into any of it? Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a big fan of everybody. But yesterday is the day that Big Rube learned Red Zone. And Big Rube watched Red Zone for seven hours. So I watched some of the Redskins game. Right. But I didn't watch it entirely. But the big thing was when, I saw, when scores happened, I saw them. And to be perfectly honest with you, they did show parts of the the cap the um, Giants game, but man, it was really boring. It, it was boring because <laughs> it was the other. It was it was your rival kicking some butt. So I, I'm, I'm gonna get into it. Um, I had, I want to give a shout out to my man C down in ATL, uh, and I want to give my, a shout out to another my man C uh, in the in the DC area. Those are 49ers fans. I'm not gonna call y'all out, but I will say that y'all got Giants logos on your Facebook pages because of the bets that y'all made. Uh, 49ers came in as the best team in the league, but for the Houston uh, Texans, uh, you had them. You also, you know, had the Giants as, I believe, a seven-point dog in this game. And they pretty much go in there, and they wreck shop. The 49ers looked pretty good on the first two drives. Uh, the defense the, the defense basically had uh, the Giants, you know, at hand in the first half. They didn't do much. Uh, and then the Giants defense didn't allow the 49ers to do much other than those field goals. And all of a sudden, every single time the Giants got the ball, it just seems like they were scoring. Uh, you had Eli Manning throwing pass after pass. You got uh, Victor Cruz. You got Hakeem Nix, who we know was injured, but he still he wasn't running well, but he's still out there. Now, here's the thing. You had Ahmad Bradshaw, who ran for 100 yards yesterday. First guy to run for 100 yards against the 49ers since November of 2009. Yep. Three years almost it's been since anybody has run for three for, for 100 yards against these cats. You had Alex Smith throwing interceptions. You had the other guy with the bugged out name, the back the, the, the backup passer for the 49ers. I can't think of his Kaepernick. name. Kaepernick, yeah, who got picked off as well. Uh, I didn't expect to go up there and win 26-3. I gotta be honest with you. I didn't see that coming. But I did see a ferocious pass rush coming from the Giants. A ferocious pass rush. And it didn't appear that the 49ers was able to do much with it. Um, Carlton Banks, I know that you were in distress because of <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys defeat uh, up in Baltimore. I'm actually su surprised that you didn't actually go up there to watch it. But did you watch any of this Giants game against the 49ers? And what were your thoughts on the 49ers being so great prior to this game. Everybody had them as, in some cases, the best team. In other cases, the second best team with the Houston Texans. Well, I didn't get to see that game. They showed the game of the week was the Deadskins and Minnesota game. However, I did get to see every now and then a highlight from the Giants game. And I think the Giants are a pretty decent team. Yes, Dallas caught them by surprise week one. Um, will we do it again? I doubt it. But the fact of the matter is this. The Giants are playing good ball right now. Um, you don't know which team you're going to get, and I'm sure you're familiar with that, Marcus. That I am. One week, one t one day you're one hit wonders, and next day you're all Hall of Famers. So it's all good. Um, Bradshaw is now showing that he can be the running back that they want him to be. From the simple fact he's tired of losing carries and he doesn't want to fumble the ball. Um, again, he knows the same thing with Jacobs. That hey. You keep backing up, we'll cut you. So you can go ahead and get somewhere else and try to get your money. It is what <laughs> it is. What it is. Um, you know, I'm watching the game and I'm excited. I, I, I'm surprised that they're you know putting it on 49ers the way they're putting it on them. Um, nobody saw it coming. 26 to three and a seven point dog. It is what it is. I move away from that. I want to kind of go around a couple of real quick hits before we go to a break. Jonathan Vilma is playing this week. Big road. What's your thoughts? Don't care. Wow. You said a whole lot, Calm Banks. Hey, man deserves to play. He wants to play. Let him play. I don't have a problem with Bill playing. 
No. I mean, I'm just I'm over the whole. Well, I know thing. that I know that your I remember what your opinion was when it went down. So that's the reason why I went. He to should be first. suspended in, or whatever. Well, just just make it. Just do something and be done with it. All these appeals and stuff is so annoying. You know, everybody's got to appeal everything. Look, you did it. You did it. He's got proof you did it. You know, just suck it up and take the time. You know, do the crime, do the time. I'm over it. I'm just completely over it. I mean, somebody's line here is either Goodell or it's Vilma. It's one of the two. Somebody's got to be lying. And I'm just sick of the fact that we're still talking about this in week seven. What about uh, the Ravens losing Ray Lewis for the rest of the season? Sucks for them. No more playoffs for them. They're done. Their defense is is done. Yeah, they are done. Um, hate to see big man go down. No, you like don't. That. No, I am. I, I, I like Ray Lewis. Um, matter of fact, I like the commercial he has with um, Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. That's, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. My little boy. Little boy. <laughs> I like to meet the little fella. Okay, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nice son. Nice son. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? That's your son? Uh, yeah. I do like the Ray commercial he has with the little girl asking the questions. Oh, that is cute. Yeah, that one. That, that one is. Why, guy, why can't you guys ask questions like this? Yeah, yeah. he'll get to do more of that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty cool as well. Anything else cool around the National Football League that you guys want to get uh, into before we Did take- you see the destruction last night? Yeah. Hey man, I was on a receiving end of a – of a what's his name? Aaron Rodgers quarterback. I was on a receiving end of that. I was, that was not cool. I'd like to say, as a fantasy player, I have Aaron Rodgers in two leagues. One of the leagues, I'm down by two points from being down by 70 – I also had James Jones and Arian Foster. Yeah, he got a full case of, of of destruction last night. I'm down by two points. Elvis Dumerville, I need three tackles from you so I can win this game. That's what it and is. And then the other fantasy league that I'm in, I was down by 60 points. And, yeah, I just whooped the living dog crap out of him. Hey, how's it going my league? That's what it is. I'm down by four. They down talking four? fantasy. But I got yeah. two people left, we, baby. We're we, we going to have to end it there because y'all talking fantasy. And you know how I step in with Marcus J. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get into the socially conscious and entertainment hour. Marcus Jane will have step and be back in a minute. This is Maida from Jersey City, and I'm listening to Mi Hermano Marcus J on Ain't No Half Seven. 